Welcome to Chi Talk. Uh, today we're going to talk about what is it in Qigong, what is the elements in Qigong in this movement practice that elicits such a healing response. You know, the first thing that I've came to the, the, the first thing that I, because of this thing, I, I kind of was interested in Qigong is the first thing I've, I've uh, encountered is uh, miracle healing. Uh, I've seen people that have been with uh, chronic conditions, and I'm talking about cancer, stage four cancer, people that have give, been given few months to live. And after a few months of Qigong, uh, they, they heal themselves. So that's, that was what interested to, interesting to me back in the days to discover why is this movement, what, is, why, what in this practice makes it so good or so healing and eliciting, eliciting such a strong healing response. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and I started my journey. This is how I started my journey. So today we're going to talk about, about what in this uh, movement practice is, it, it does it, what, what does it? Um, so this is, this is the talk of the day. And um, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for taking the time in the middle of the day to join me here. Um, my name is Eli Cohen. For anybody that doesn't know me, I'm a medical Qigong practitioner and energy healing coach. I've been practicing for over 10 years and helping people over 10 years to, uh, to heal, to connect with them, their own self, to find uh, their own power and, um, and, and healing from within. So, uh, and especially it's very appropriate now when, that, when it seems like there's so many things going on in the world and there's so much healing is needed. Uh, so, so let's start with a little bit of a meditation like we always do. So if you may, I just wanna invite you to close your eyes and take a few deep breaths. Few deep breaths in from the nose and out through the mouth. Closing the eyes and just coming inwardly, coming into your energy system, into your body. Let the breath go deep into the lower abdomen. And have the breath as soft and deep as you can. And smooth. Kind of like a very beautiful waves of the ocean. Long and smooth and deep. And softly... Allow, allow the breath to just continue on its own without any effort on your part to make it long or deep. Just kind of gradually disengage from controlling the breath in any different way like what we did. And moving your attention now to the sensation of your body, any sensation inside of your body. So you might be feeling the feet touching on the floor to begin with. That would be very nice to kind of keep you grounded. You might notice the sensation of breath in the body. Now, when the breath comes in, the body moves. There's a movement that associates itself with the breath. Or you might notice... Um, different things like pain or discomfort or you might might noticing some tingling or buzzing sensation in different parts of the body and let yourself explore all of these phenomena noticing beyond the label of this is pain or this is good or this is bad, noticing beyond the label and open yourself to embrace the aliveness of all these movements inside of you.
And even if you think that you're sitting still, see if you can detect the movement. Does the body really stop to move? Even if you're very still, Movement on the inside, a movement of the outside. Let the breath move you, the heartbeats even move you. And if you develop a very subtle mind, very sharp mind, Try to be very still. There's still movement. Acknowledging the subtlest movement in the body. And here, let's slowly open our eyes. Nice. Beautiful. Very relaxing. You know, one way to relax the mind that brings a lot of stress, <laughs> a lot of thoughts, where we like to think a lot. And these thinking mind creates a lot of, a lot of problems to us. <laughs> One way to quiet the mind and to release stress is to just sense the body. And whenever you come into a very subtle vibration in the body, very your mind is get clearer or more still, you can feel subtle and subtle vibration. And that's very, very healing. So let's talk from this meditation. It would be very easy to jump into what makes Qigong movement so healing. What is it? What are the elements in the practice itself that elicit such a healing response? And that was my question. When I came in my first Qigong workshop, I didn't know what I'm going to. It was a workshop, but it was a, a, a master that has a many people following him for many years. And people came up on stage and they all healed from really severe conditions. And I was, I was pretty shocked. I was like, what? And that was before we started the practice. So I was wondering, like, I was very interested in what's going to happen next. What, what, what movement will he show? What energy practices will we do that these people did that eliciting, eliciting such a strong healing response? And that was my, how I started my journey. So first, let's talk about movement and why, why movement is very important. Now, there's different movements. There's yoga. There's... There's jogging, there's running, there's uh, people uh, do CrossFit now or lifting weights or all kinds of movements. Uh, swimming, <laughs> there's tons of movement. Now, movement is very important because movement is life. There's always movement. This is the essence. So let's start with this. If I, th I thought, what should we start to talk with? What element should we start to talk with? And it would be about movement. Because movement is the essence of life. Without movement, there's no life. Movement, it's, it's really the movement between yin and yang. The, the, the life is happening through changes. If there's no movement, there's no life. So movement is essential for life. 
even and if there's no movement there's stagnation <clears throat> and stagnation uh, breeds ailment in the body if we talk about the body there's always flow there's always flow things are always in flow in the universe and around us the oceans the waves the trees the wind the sun the night the day there's always movement inside of us too and you shouldn't um, mix movement um, sorry stagnation with stillness <laughs> yeah stillness also has movement like we saw in this meditation so stillness when you are trying to be still the movement the energy the movement is inwardly yes yeah, so so stillness is really about moving the energy more inwardly which is very healing so uh so so if there's no movement there's stagnation and stagnation uh, uh blockages we see it as blockages as, as congealed in chinese medicine we talk about congealed energy energy that turns into ice and that energy is uh, separated from the wholeness and uh and heal wholeness is really the same word as healing healing is open yourself to the whole so movement is the first element that is very important so why moving like qigong why qigong movement is is much um um is, is very healing than other movement practice like running not that running is not healing for you a lot of people get a lot of healing through through movement in general, they go exercise, they feel better. So movement is the essence. And why in Qigong? Qigong, the movements are usually combines of different types of movement. <laughs> They're combined of like some light stretches, some flow movement that are, are kind of like the signature of, of Qigong. And some of it, some people know it from Tai Chi, some invigorating practice that are more rapid. <laughs> There's really a, assortment of uh, movement practices but really if we look at uh at the healing um movement aspect of qigong is these slow movement the the very uh relaxed and slow movement kind of flow movement that are similar to how people move in tai chi i'm just saying it for people that have uh, haven't been practicing qigong and maybe they have some ideas so a lot of people think about tai chi this slow movement these movements are specifically good for for healing and why moving slowly is very good so it also combines it with the breath so whenever uh so what why what creates stagnation let's talk about that <laughs> it would be more clear so what creates stagnation or blockages is really a resisting to the flow when we are resisting something we create stagnation when we're resisting something that's coming to our life we don't like it or we don't like certain pain we start to dis disengage, we start to create resistant. Resistant, create, eventually ongoing resisting create a blockage in the body. So uh, movement would be very good for any stagnation. And also the, the, the breath, so the slow movement creates a very soft breathing pattern, a very relaxed breathing pattern. And it's opposite the stress response so we have to understand when we are resisting something when we are not liking something we are in a, a place of stress of what we call inflammation emotional emotion uh, negative emotions are also seen as inflammation in this time when we are resisting something we are creating inflammation the inflammation cause a raised heart rate and a very the mind goes in circles very fast so whenever you're in stress if you think about it, it feels like you're in a very closed room with a lot of people it doesn't feel spacious and open and 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 relaxed it feels um yeah so when the breath goes slower when we are breathing very slow and deep we are basically telling the mind that we are not stressed because uh, breathing is very important. Breathing exists in the root of the brain, in the stem of the brain, where the emotions are also being controlled from. So it's a very uh, 
it is the survival brain, the limbic brain. It's a very repti the reptilian brain. It's very uh, survival uh, uh, type of, uh, um, uh, of of response. The stress response is is here to keep you to keep you safe from danger. And the breath is being controlled from the same area. So when you change the breath into a very long, deep breath, all of a sudden, it's like you're telling your mind, hey, there's no danger, actually. I can relax. This start the process of un undoing the, the resistance. Yeah, so when we're in a resistance, think about you resisting something, what happened? Tension, thinking fast, heartbeat, heart rate is, is up. When you're going slow, it, you tapping, when you're breathing slow, the breath is the most powerful element in working with the mind and the emotions is to calm down, yeah? To calm down and to relax on the root level of the mind, on the root level of the mind on this limbic brain. So you're telling your mind, actually everything is okay. When you're moving slow, it's the same thing. Moving slow uh, has few purposes here. So the slow movement of Qigong has few purposes and the one most important purposes for healing, especially in this lineage that I was exposed to back when, is the is the meditation part, is the visualization part, <clears throat> is the heart attunement. So together with slow breathing and slow movement, you are working with the mind. And that's very important. So you cannot, it's not like, um, you know, when you do exercise, you don't think about anything. You just run or you do the exercise. You, your mind can think about about politics, can think about all kinds of, in Qigong, you, if you're really doing Qigong as Qigong, there's a lot of Qigong now online that is just based on movement, you know, a lot of Qigong you see online or YouTube, whatever, is like, do this, do this movement, it's very good, it's very good for your body, movement is very good, slow movement with slow breathing, you will get a healing response, if you want to do healing Qigong, par excellence, a medical Qigong, you have to engage with your mind. You have to engage with your mind. So the mind attunement would be very important. So the Qi, if we talk about Qi, we are talking about your attention, your intention, and your breath. So your attention cannot be in, um, what are you going to eat tonight while you're doing Qigong? We say this is a scattered Qi. When you are here, but you're thinking about something else, your chi is scattered, is imbalance. <laughs> yeah, it's like a person, <laughs> it's a person like a boss telling his worker, like keep your eyes on what you're doing. You, you, you're looking here and you're thinking about something else. Yeah, so there's scatteredness. So if you want your chi to be balanced, what you're doing, where you put your mind in, and where and 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 what the quality of of the attention is very important. So we have the quantity and the quality of your chi. So the attention, uh, how attentive you are to what you're doing in your body, and the intention. What is your intention of doing the practice? If you're intending to heal yourself, a specific area in the body or whatever it is, you have to engage that. And that was very very powerful in this specific lineage that I was exposed to in the beginning. The movement was, were almost secondary. It was the mind it, intention, the focus on, on gratitude, on love, and on self-blessing, and visualizing health and visualizing light inside of you. The visualization part the the mind intention of the trust the trust that you you that you are going to heal that you are already healed is very powerful and that practice this whole practice with the mind in general it's called nei gong there's a qi gong which is more movement and there's a nei gong which is which means nei means internal 
uh, internal practice, gong is practice. So the internal practice is the things that you don't see. You know, I can lift my hand, you see I'm lifting my hand, but when I do something with my heart, I'm thinking about love or, or I'm putting my attention in my heart or in my hand or in my leg, <laughs> you don't see it. So all the stuff that you don't see, it's called negong, internal, you don't see it. Or also what I do with the breath is part of negong. Yeah, so it's internal practice. So <clears throat> now if you think about it, you cannot do movement fast and do the, <laughs> do the meditation. So the, the slow movement is designed to, to do a few things, to elicit the mind. So you can do this visualization, work, work on it in your mind. So you're really uh, engaging with, with, uh, with what you visualize, because uh, you cannot do fast movement and also meditate really deeply. Yeah, it's, it's, it's co counteractive, it uh, doesn't flow really. So the slow movement and the attention in the body and uh, the, the more stillness, the more you are in kind of between sitting meditation or, or doing a lot of movement, the, the kind of like the balance, the, the, the closest you get to, uh, to uh, um, a, a stillness, the deeper the chi can go. <laughs> yeah the deeper the healing will go. So really it's, um, it's, it's, it's a lot of, um, it, it, it's this combination. It's the breath, the movement. The movement, what it does also, it opens channels in the body. Yeah, it, it lets the chi flow in your body. So the energy, wherever you have blockages tend to flow. We guide the energy through our attention from the universe into the body and flow it down. So we, we really, we really getting um, our skill is to, is to open the channels by using our mind, our attention, our, our visualization with the breath together. And, and that can be done when you're going very, very slow. So the slow movement, the deep breathing, the breath has its own role, like what I mentioned. And, um, and, and the movement gets to get the oxygen into different parts of the body too. And actually it's been measured that when you breathe slowly, very deep, slow breath, you are actually getting more oxygen. You are actually infusing the body with more, with more energy. When you do it, when your hands are in the back or when you're lifting your hands, different areas open up it triggers different areas. So the movements are very complex in Qigong and they're mimicking, they're going along with how our bones are constructed, how our joints are constructed. They're all rounded. If you look at the joints, the joints are very rounded. They're not linear. So all the um, movements are very rounded and that would to increase the qi flow, the lubrication. So it's a really uh, interesting technique uh, combined with the visualization, combined with the breath, combined with slow movement, and um, practiced over time, practice daily, or uh, depends if you if you want to clear uh, some uh, some condition, you really want to practice daily. If you're doing it for preventative medicine, <laughs> you can do it three or four times a week. An hour would be fine. Yeah. And, um, and going slow is really good for your heart, <laughs> really good for your kidneys. Yeah, it brings you into a state of balance, balanced chi. <laughs> okay, this is kind of like a little synopsis. I'm just looking at the watch too. So I'll try to, um, let me open it to either sharing or Q&A. Um, if anybody would like to say anything, about what I said, about what I shared, or have a question, um, please do. That was just a, a, a very brief. Anybody wants to say anything? I have a question. Uh huh. Yeah. Esther. How do you spell Nagong? Nagong. So yeah, I would like to do some research. 
So yeah. um yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, N E I. N E I. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, internal practice. Uh, gong is a practice or a skill. <laughs> Nei is internal. Um, Nei dan. Sometimes we call it Nei dan. Dan is elixir. So whenever in Chinese medicine we talk about about uh, <laughs> we talk about elixir. So you're getting an elixir from internal. And there's Waidan, which is external elixir, W-A-I. So a lot of times you see Nei Dan and Waidan uh, in literature if you're looking it up. Uh, uh, Waidan or Nei Dan. <laughs> Thank you, Esther. Uh, Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, Bart, you're raising your hand. Hello, <coughs> Eli. Um, while you were talking, I was uh, also thinking about relaxation, because when I began to study with you and watch your videos, you explain all the different aspects of Qigong, like uh, the breath, the intention, the attention, the movement, and but also relaxation. And I was asking myself now: Is the do we the relaxation? Is it the start of something? Do we actively relax? Or is the relaxation a consequence of the movement and the breath? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much for, for talking about it because it is uh, another aspect that, uh, that I, I, I missed. So <laughs> thank you for the relaxation. And the relaxation is an active relaxation. So it's, it's intended. So when we, when we are starting Qigong, uh, we call this uh, a song, it's in Chinese it's called Song La, which is, means uh, relaxation. Also means like uh, letting, uh, giving way to gravity in a way. So it's a, a kind of a grounding and it's, it is an active relaxation. So in Qigong, we always keep our, our knees, we say soft, all our joints soft. So we're just coming into the body and softening everything. And, and through the practice, there's additional relaxation that happens. And that's very, very important in, 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 in the healing process, in, in, uh, um, in eliciting a healing response, the relaxation, the breath, the slow movement. You really want to uh, get attuned and settle and uh, develop sensitivity to subtler and subtler energy, kind of like we did in the meditation in the beginning. I kind of guide you like, can you feel the most subtle movement? Just ignore the obvious one, like of the breath and go to the one that of the heart or go to, and maybe you can feel even your blood moving. I mean, it, it, it's, it's really good to train the mind to listening to, to sensitivity, to subtler and subtler and subtler energies. And that would, uh, that would be very healing. Yeah. Thank you, Bart. Uh, Gail, yes. Just briefly, I want to let you know that with, with is going on in the world and in my world is emotionally uh, activating. And rather than go, I'm grateful for what you offer. And I found myself looking for the spring or whatever it was where you were talking about emotional release and the heart. And I did that particular practice because right now my heart hurts. And so you have offered in the various practices that are on your Qigong practice um, I invite people to join that for sure. You can navigate to what is it that you're needing right now? And I'm just sharing that you help me open up and allow myself to release the pain of my heart with that practice. And plus I saw the clouds and I'm mostly air. So that helped me too. I flying free from what's going on. Anyway, that's my two cents. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Gail, for sharing. Yes, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, um, it's a difficult time. Yeah, there's, there's things going on around us and 
and it's very important to be connected to to the heart in this time and and to to practice really a time of turmoil it's the most important time to practice when we are not feeling like practicing <laughs> feeling like watching the news so it's very important thank you for sharing this uh yes edward so everything you say is is so true and i have healed myself which i spoke to you about uh, uh right before my first son was born from um hepatitis from eating bad fish and just staying in my body and pulling out my liver and squeezing out the yellow bile and two days later the doctor said you i don't know what's wrong you went from 480 billy rubin to 280. a doctor five years ago told me you have the gout and i just said i don't have that and i worked on it and that was the end of that and from your practice which you know how much uh, i can't thank you enough uh you know i've learned so much and i also learned the secret in the healing from the stage four and that is it's not about me it's about others and um being able to heal myself not to give anybody a, a problem or an issue uh really has shown me a way to get through an illness you know i'm not going to give you any problems with this i'm going to stay healthy for you and not not doing it or saying it so i heal but that i really give them the confidence um that i will not cause them a problem and answering to what gail just said and, and what's going on in the world i also know that my word creates my world and if this offends anybody forgive me but i go into meditation, into sleep at night going, Vladimir Putin is dead. Vladimir Putin will get assassinated. They will withdraw from the Ukraine. And I am so in that space, knowing that I'm responsible for everything in the planet and heal the planet also. It's just not within me. And the planet is me. But let me tell you, I'm, I'm so on it and telling people just just pray for him to be assassinated, just pray for him to go away and for this whole thing to heal for these Ukrainians, for them, not for me, for them, the suffering goes away, you know, and um, I, I know it's going to work. I know he, his, his day, day not days day is numbered and they're going to get him they're going to get him okay let's not get into politics too much Edward. thank you so right. much for what you shared but um, it's heavy on all of us right now yeah, so. yeah 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 and 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 you know whenever we feel this anger whenever we feel this turmoil inside of us it is inside of us we we uh you know how can we how can we you know cleanse and clear it is to connect with with love because where it comes from it comes from love that anger or that upsetness come originated from love to humanity love for peace and and we want to connect with uh, with that with uh, that original intention and amplify that um i i i believe so um Thank you for that. Yeah, it's it's a hard time, and 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 really, uh, instead of macerating in the turmoil of negative energy, look at what where it come from. It come from a good place, from from a good place, and from uh, and this is what will connect us back to the heart. Uh, thank you, Edward. Thank you so much, Judy. Yes, what do you what do what do you want to? Sure. I would just want to say that when I go to bed, I, I pray for love and justice to prevail. That's what yeah. I visualize. Yeah. Um, but I did have a question for you. Uh-huh. Yeah. Talk talk a little bit more, if you would, Ali, about how we transform the chi that's in the universe, in, in the earth, in the sky, in the trees, and the air, whatever. How, how do how what is the process that brings that into our body? It, I mean, I get that it has to do with your breath. Um, uh, you're talking about 
Well, that was that was the subject of last talk. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I missed something. <laughs> yeah, we, we talked a lot about how to harness, how to connect with the energy of all around us. Because we have this illusion that this is it. This this body is it. And uh, and that we are this body. You you are not this body. You have a body, but you you are the entire universe and we can tap into it. And I, I will invite you to, uh, instead of answering it, because uh, there is a talk about it. I'll next, go back uh, and look at that. Last yeah. week. I think about, I missed that one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll send it out. I think uh, we're, it's, it should come out. It's actually, I think it's out already. I'll, I'll have to ask. But really, it's, it's uh, the short answer for here, but I, I would like you, for you to see this last talk is about is about appreciation and about curiosity and about being in awe uh, and 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 open your energy to you know when we are appreciating something we're starting to exchange energy with it when i love somebody i start to exchange energy with them when you love the ocean you start to exchange energy with it when <laughs> when you love the sky when you start to, you are the sky. When you look into the, the sea, you are the sea. You know, when you are appreciating, curious, in awe of the surrounding, it, you start to, to exchange energy with it. And, uh, but, but the, the, the uh, I want you to see, to listen to the last talk. And, and that was really a little bit more in length, but that's, that's kind of like uh, um, how, we, how, we, uh, how we exchange energy or how we absorb energy from the energy all around us is, is through, through, uh, through, uh, through our appreciation, through our curiosity, through our awe, through our... Um, you can even talk with it, with with elements of nature, yeah. There's there's a whole um, yeah. In the last talk, talk we talked about it a little bit more deeply. Uh, every, there's beings, you know. A tree is a being. A plant is a being. The ocean, the mountain, is a, is a, is a being. It's not a human being, but it's a different being, and it has consciousness. And you can actually converse. You can have an exchange. And a lot of time we are, we think that, um, yeah, the things that the, 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 the things that come into our mind are just maybe thoughts from somewhere or where are, are they from you or they're from somewhere else? You know, if I tell you, close your eyes and think about a flower, I bet you're going to bring the color and the smell and the surrounding of that flower that you're thinking about why i didn't tell you the color i just told you a flower where is the rest of the information came from so there's things that we so we we are opening our senses to receive energy uh and we when and we trust it you know there's a, there we can converse with elements even it's it's really interesting. <laughs> it's a little spooky, maybe, but it's it's fascinating. And there's there's literature on it. Just look at my last talk from last week. I'll make sure that it's. Yeah, it's I'll, I'll go look. I'll go look at that. I'm, I think I missed that one, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I was a missing Thank piece. you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's close with a little bit of meditation. And since we're talking about the heart and what's going on in the world, let's let's. Uh, Let's close our eyes and come to our heart. And take a deep breath into the heart. And with each breath, each breath, you visualize that this breath is a water. And it waters a garden, a flower. So each breath is food. For the garden inside of you, 
in the heart. And feel your appreciation to this heart that beats for all these years. And see if you can listen or you can feel the heart beats. You feel the movement in your chest, not the breath, the heartbeat. Smile to the heart and connect with the desire for peace, for love, for all human being, all human beings. And extend your heart to whoever needs it now. Sending love and strength and power from your heart to the heart of the universe, to the heart of anybody that is in need. Any misguided, any people that are misguided, send them wisdom from your heart. Really see an op this opportunity of if you are moved by this turmoil that is going on in the world to practice this. To practice more amplifying love and harmony within yourself and extend it out. And that keeps you connected to your heart keeps you connected to healing energy. Nice, so let's open the hands, palm on the thighs and open the eyes. Beautiful, thank you so much for this. Thank you for coming here. Thank you for joining at Chi Talk, I really, really appreciate this. Uh, this Chi Talk is gonna be transcribed into the podcast called Awaken the Healer Within. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you tomorrow in uh, Good Night Qigong or in person in the JCC at noon if you wanna, in San Rafael. Okay, bye now. Thank you, Ali. Thank you so much. Bye, Edward. Thank you, bye, Ali. Judy, <laughs> bye, Gail.